last year when I was doing my IGCSEs, a video that I had wished existed more is a video like this one, how to get an A star in IGCSE ICT. So today I'm giving you just exactly that, a video that I had needed so much last year and I'm finally able to do because I, alhamdulillah, got an A star in ICT. Uh, also, if you're watching this during Ramadan, Ramadan Kareem, uh, and I hope you have a blessed month. Uh, so yeah, if you're new here, I'm Habiba, and I got an A star in eight IGCSE subjects last year, these being these eight subjects, and I'm currently doing a series on how you can get an A star in all of these subjects. Uh, the videos that I have done before are up here, and in the description. And if you want to recommend what videos I should do next, let me know in the comments because I check them out and they motivate me so much and thank you so much for the support. Let's get started. So just a bit of a background information on ICT. I did ICT last year during May, June 2022 and it was during COVID times as well. So my school did an exemption for ICT and uh, we were only given paper one, which is the theory paper, and paper two and paper three, which are practical papers, were excluded or exempted because of COVID regulations. So I did not do these papers. However, when I was doing them during online classes and when we were taking tests for them, I, alhamdulillah, got high grades in those two. So I can technically give you a lot of advice on these as well. Uh, now, ICC, as I said, has these three papers and... I feared the most paper one, which is the theory paper, because there was just so much content. And if you take ICT, you would understand what I mean by this. Uh, but yeah, so today I'm going to help you out with that. Let's start with theory, because this is what I was scared of the most. And this is what actually scares a lot of students that do take ICT. If you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, so how I studied ICT. The sources, first of all, uh, were the textbook and the textbook mostly because it basically is a complete guide on everything you need to know to succeed in ICT. Uh, and then there were also online notes. There were a lot of these. However, my two most favorite websites were igcseict.com and ICT Lounge. These were saviors. Not only did they make the process more fun, like I love doing research, so taking more information from the internet actually made it more fun but they also summarized it and you know you know how you get scared when you see all of this content in the textbook they made it less intimidating basically so i highly recommend these uh websites and i'll recommend all the resources i say in this video in the description uh there are also youtube channels for theory like yasser ahmed on youtube uh, and this guy is also a life savior like I recommend watching his videos he explains those theory concepts really well um if you like videos uh, and he also does PowerPoint presentations that I would print and use, uh, and I'll get back to how I would use his presentations. Uh, but yeah, check him out. I'll also link it down below. Uh, now, I'll give you my study methods for ICT theory. So what I would do, first of all, is read the textbook, because the textbook is where everything starts. Uh, I would read one page fully. And basically understand, like you're here trying to understand, you're trying to learn, you know what I mean? So I'd read the entire page and try to understand what's going on. And then after I'm done with that, I go over and, you know, reflect on what I remember and write it down on a blank piece of paper. So like I would, you know, try to remember everything I read and write it down on the piece of paper uh, in points or summarized or anything like that. Or even like, you know, say it to myself, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, you summarize it, and then you say it out loud. And then I would compare what I wrote down, or what I said, to the textbook again. So I open the textbook, and I see, and I compare. And if there's anything that I've written wrong, or a misconception, I go back and I read it in the textbook, and then I mark it with red pen. If there's anything I missed, I also add it with red pen. So, like, red pen kind of pops up in my memory, so I remember what I have missed, or any mistakes that I've done. Um, this method is basically your active recalling so like you're doing something actively with your brain and with your memory and not something passive like just reading a textbook because when you only read the textbook you won't retain everything that you have read in the next day but if you keep playing this game of memorizing and then recalling what you have memorized before the ideas and the points are most are more likely to stick in your brain that's basically what i'm trying to say uh 
Next, I would print those PowerPoints that I've talked about, uh, Yasser Ahmed's PowerPoints. Uh, I would kind of like, you know, downscale them so that like, they're only like 70% of the entire page and I'd leave these like blank spaces in the page. And then what I would do is I would read his uh, PowerPoint slides and then I would annotate anything that is missing or any extra points or anything that I remember from the textbook basically. I make it this fun game of recalling what I have already read while reading what he has written because sometimes he has some extra points that are relevant or sometimes he has missing points that I add them up from the textbook. Uh, as well as I would read the notes online because I loved those online notes so much and I would add anything from those notes that made the learning process easier or anything that is missing again. Uh, and I would end up with these annotated pages uh, of the slides that he has and it makes the learning process way more fun than just reading the textbook and trying to go with the textbook only, trust me on that. Uh, and if I find these annotated slides, I would love to like put a slide, one of them like on screen right now to see, to make you see like what I'm talking about. Uh, after that, I, oh yeah, if, if you don't like reading the textbook, you know how sometimes you read the textbook so much you just get bored and you cannot do this anymore, uh, you could watch Yasser Ahmed's video uh, on theory. I think he's the only person on YouTube or one of the only people on YouTube that explain ICT theory. So I would watch his videos uh, and instead of the textbook. Of course, afterwards, like I would read the textbook because sometimes his videos do miss a couple of points. However, as a starter, it like pushes you and gets the ball rolling, you know, gets you actually studying uh, if you lack the motivation to start studying first with the textbook. Um, yeah. Also, understand more than memorize. ICT is a lot about understanding the concept. If you understand the concept, you won't need to memorize anything. Um, so just try to understand what the textbook is trying to say, and you'll basically pass the subject. You don't need to memorize anything. Understanding here is the key. Next, past papers. Solve a ton of past papers. Last year, I when I went to Egypt, um, for summer vacation before my IGCSE exams, I bought this gigantic past paper classified uh, workbook textbook thing, you know, where you can solve. It's just past papers, past paper questions that are classified into the chapters. So every time I study a chapter, I would go and solve questions related to that chapter. If you can't find a classified booklet that you could buy from uh, an IGCSE library or like you know what I mean uh, if you can't find those you can solve normal past papers that's also fine but I like those as starters because uh, lessons that I lack a lot of strength in I would go and solve more for those uh, chapters but it's definitely fine if you just start with past papers solve a lot a lot of past papers now something you might notice as an ICT student is not Everything you write down is in the marking scheme. Even if your words seem very, very correct, and they are correct and factual, they might not end up in the marking scheme, which was kind of very disheartening because, you know, after all the studying, they don't end up being in the marking scheme like they should have been. Uh, but you're just going to have to go with it, you know. Uh, the marking scheme prefers certain terms and certain examples over others. So that's why I say solve a lot of past papers you could even like that's why I don't recommend like use the textbook as like revision for your concepts but don't revise I mean don't like memorize from the textbook memorize instead from the marking scheme and the points and examples that they prefer and the keywords that they use the most and you only get to know this from practicing a lot of papers in fact I used to do notes for ICT from past paper marking schemes so like for every chapter uh, once I came across a question from that chapter, I would do, do notes on the points that the marking scheme prefers. And also, these questions repeat a lot. So like when they repeat a lot, you will understand exactly what the points that they want are, and they will stick in your memory, and everything is going to go fine and smooth and perfect, basically. So solve a lot of past papers. This is the main way you can get an A-star in IGCC, ICT. You cannot get an A-star from the textbook alone. Yeah, um, now, practicals. Practicals are quite easy to score in. Even my sister that is in ninth grade right now, she's supposed to do 
like her exams next year she says and she is getting high marks by basically doing like not much you know like the bare minimum and she still scores high marks so what you're supposed to do to score high marks in practicals is listen very carefully to your teacher during the class during your lab periods uh so that you can save yourself a lot of time you know when you're solving um and you have not listened in class it gets hard to try to understand how to do something when you've not been listening to class so save yourself all that time uh, and actually listen in class uh, and then open a lot of papers and solve a lot of papers because you're going to come across a lot of different styles of asking questions and different ways of doing things and solving a lot makes your speed also faster because like your time is very limited during the exam and you definitely don't want to be doing something wrong and you have to redo it so solve a lot and get used to the style and everything like that uh, and also there are a lot of YouTube tutorials and everything like that that teach you the method and the way to do it if you don't know how to do it. Um, and also check the marking scheme because like everything you print, I'm pretty sure, is what goes to Cambridge. So check the marking scheme and compare what you've printed to the marking scheme and see where you go wrong. Uh, see where your weak points are overall in the papers. So for example, in paper 2, your weak point is PowerPoint. Uh, so like now you know where to focus on more and so on and so forth. Um, read the textbook. The textbook is really, really helpful for practicals. It's way more helpful than you actually think. Um, I recommend you read the entire thing at least once. Um, but it's also a good guide. So like if you don't know how to do a specific question like VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP, you can always look it up in the textbook. Uh, and yeah, don't leave it to the last second. I know the ICT practicals are coming in about a week, like two weeks or less than two weeks. So don't leave it to last minute. Uh, if you see this video right now, start solving those past papers and solve a lot of them because they're very time consuming, like one paper requires two hours or something like that. So start solving from now and find your mistakes from now and improve from now and watch videos about it and all of that stuff. And also solve from different years. Because different years have different styles and different types of questions, so you're going to gain a lot of knowledge and make notes of your mistakes for both theory and practical and always check this mistake log and try to improve yourself on your mistakes. Uh, and yeah, that's basically it. Um, ICT overall is a pretty, like, it was a really heavy subject when I didn't know what to do. But now that I know that ICT is basically just like based off of past papers, like you solve as much as possible, it's basically become way easier to me at least. So, so solve a lot, you know, and revise your mistakes. Oh yeah, for solving theory past papers, as I said before, it can get very unmotivating when you lose marks on points that you should have gained marks on, but you're not gaining marks because it's not in the marking scheme, if that makes sense. Uh, but you just have to know and trust the process uh, basically, like, give it time, you know, like, don't rush it, just know that it's going to take a lot of time to get to a point where you start writing down points that the marking scheme wants, so don't get disheartened by this, don't get disheartened by getting, getting very low marks, because everyone starts at very, very low ICT marks, even me, but you just have to know that it will get better, just, like, solve a lot, and you will start seeing the progress because ICT is based a lot on solving past papers and, you know, just taking from the marking scheme, you won't get better unless you do past papers and you do a lot of years for past papers. So if you get disheartened, just remember this and do not leave your past papers because this is what is going to lead you to getting an A-star, basically. So yeah, track your progress, uh, track your marks. You're going to see that you're going to you know, get better and better marks the more and more you solve. It is a very, very long process, but it pays off at the end when you get that A star and you survive the subject. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this to your friends who need help as much as you do. Um, and yeah, bye.